Hey everyone, it's Wingspan TT, and today we're playing something a little bit new. It's Magic the Gathering, Duels of the Planeswalkers 2012. Um, if you've been through uh, Top Tier Tactics, you probably know um, I was a big fan of the original Duels of the Planeswalkers. I, I was originally ranked like number 20 in the world in that. Um, not to brag, of course. Uh, and here's the new one. It's available on Xbox Live and Steam and maybe PlayStation Network if that service still works, but I, I can't guarantee that. And today we're going to be looking at Chandra and Nilar's deck, Unquenchable Fire. I just want to talk a little bit about how to play this deck, how to play um, Burn in general. Um, and this is not meant to be a card-by-card -card analysis by any means, but just really like a, oh, I'm bad at this game, what am I doing wrong? Now, right away, I, I have not unlocked every card in this deck, so I'm playing this kind of like half unlocked, so you can kind of see there's some cards in here I don't really love. This um, Cinder Wall, the 3-3 three -three Wall for one, is not great, but it stalls off something like these Phantasmal Bears. The Kiln Fiend, however, I believe it's the Kiln, yes, the Kiln Fiend, 1-2 two for 2 mana, basically every time you cast an instant sorcery it's powerful, and I already have the Chandra's Phoenix lined up for the third round here. It's very important, you know, yes, there's a timer in the game, um, but you want to think about what you're doing, like, you want to think, what could your opponent possibly be doing? Now, he's going to attack with a 2-2, two -two, I guess to try to make you waste the Kiln Fiend, but his deck, the blue deck, and this is important in this game, this is part of what makes you good at duels and plays offers, is knowing what your opponent could possibly have. Alright, so he drops another bears to drop it. Now the thing with the bears is once it's targeted, it automatically dies. So we're just gonna target here. I could have cast the Phoenix, but I'm instead gonna target this bear, get it off the field. Alright, so it's out of the way. Kill the Phoenix gets plus three, plus O, oh, so attack for four, four, two creature. And in general, it was very important to the burn deck because you want to constantly be weighing, you know, what am I going to do with the burn cards? The last thing you ever want to do is use them on the player. If any time it's possible to use them on a creature, that's what you want to do. Now he's going to use his whole turn to draw some cards. He can't really do anything about that, but good to know. And you do not want to, at this point now, he's got full hand. I'm not going to waste, you know, this turn um, burning him. I'm going to get another creature on the board. He's reading the Phoenix. The Phoenix is three mana, two, two flying haste. And whenever you do, uh, damage to an opponent with a spell, it goes back to your hand. Now, it's not going to happen too often, but at least you have that option. Attack for three, bring it down to 13, and pass the turn. You want to constantly think about what cards could he possibly have in his hand. It's kind of like poker. Like, how well you do, it depends on how well you can determine, like, what cards could be in your opponent's hand and what you're going to do about it. He draws cards, but little does he know the game is pretty much fucking over. Draw land, play the land, play Sizzle. And Sizzle's a terrible card. Three damage to each opponent for three mana. Doesn't really do anything, but it's going to buff the Kiln Fiend, so he's going to take six, basically, from it. Three from the card itself, three from the Kiln Fiend. I've done the calculations in my head. Um, going to hit him with three for the Volcanic Hammer, another three to the Kiln Fiend. And yeah, that's pretty much game set match. It's going to push the Kiln Fiend up to, like, seven. Uh, yeah, he's dead. Okay. So he conceded. That's fine. I see a lot of people online get really pissed when players concede. Well, here's the tip, buddies. Go fuck yourselves, because that's how you play Magic the Gathering. Um... I have played this game not as long as some people. I've played Magic on and off ever since Ex Exodus, Stronghold or Exodus, which was quite some time ago for uh, anyone who's familiar with Magic. And uh, this is, yeah, this is at triple speed here. But um, you do want to, while you're unlocking cards, while you're still unlocking it, drop by the deck editor in between every match, see what cards were added, and decide if you want them or not. And I can do a more detailed analysis about which cards are worthwhile, but uh, we'll save that for another time. These are the first three games I played. I didn't, like, edit out my losses or anything like that. And you want to determine, do you have a good hand? I got something I can play for two mana, for three mana, for four mana, and four lands. So in general... I wouldn't stick with an opening hand unless it had three or four land. Five or six is too much. One, zero is obviously bad. One or two is way too little. The only time I'd stick with a two mana, two land starting hand is if literally every single card in your hand costs two or less mana to play. So that way you knew you could at least get through your first four, you know, four or five turns with no problem. But that's not necessarily a good sign. Now he's going to play this guy. It's a, it's a one one, but it gets stronger. It's basically. An illusion that gets stronger based on how many illusions on the board. I'm going to burn it. At the end of his turn, it's an instant, um, so I can still kill it, you know, during his turn. I just want to get it off the board so it's not bigger than, uh, so I don't have to deal with how big it is. Uh, now, recently here, now, I'm going to play the Chandra's Phoenix, but I have drawn Banefire. All right, Banefire is a great card because if X is higher than 5, like it's an X burning spell, but once it's past 5, your opponent cannot prevent it anyway. They cannot counter it. They cannot prevent the damage, and that's great against blue because it's basically an ace hole. It means if you can get enough land out and they're under whatever amount of land you have, you can finish them off. There's nothing they can do about it. Pretty much nothing. Other Adept, great card. 2-2, when it comes to play, it's going to bounce one of my cards. It's going to bounce the Phoenix. Um... 
not amazing because the Phoenix has haste, so it's just going to come out and hit him again. But it is basically forcing me to waste my whole turn. The whole turn where I spent my three mana to cast the Phoenix was waste. So now I'm going to have to do it all over again, attack him again. Not like I was necessarily going to use um, Chandra's Outrage instant to uh, hit him, or to hit any of his, I guess, to hit his creatures. It's the only thing I could do. But tempo is very important in Magic because there's tons of times where you lose and you would have won if you could have one more turn. So if you can force someone to waste their whole turn doing something like replaying something they've already done or untapping things that shouldn't have been tapped to begin with, it's basically uh, good. So Chandra's Phoenix, not a great card, not a terrible card, but it puts pressure on, and you always have the option of getting it back. And again, I don't recommend using your burn spells on your opponent, but some burn spells like Lava Axe and Sizzle you can only use on your opponent. And in some cases, using on your opponent will be good if you know that that's what's going to kill them this turn. So I have some more burn here. He's played that card that basically makes all his illusions better. But whether or not I want to burn it, I guess depends on... I don't know, it depends on what's on the table. I like to keep my options open. I have five on 10 mana. I do have um, Chandra's Outrage, which is an instant. So... In general, I prefer to keep my options open because I don't know what he's gonna play. He could play, he could play something that's better. Um, you know, yes, he's gonna play this Phantom Beast, but it does not have haste, so I don't have to worry about it. But I do have the option to, at the end of his turn, use Chandra's Outrage, or you know, right now, right? Yeah, he's tight now. You're not attacking me. Goodbye. Get rid of this thing. Obviously, it's more dangerous because it's in play. It's making everything else bigger. Now that it's gone, I can once again target his uh, illusions and make them go bye bye with my burn. Obviously, you can always make things go bye-bye with burn, but the one thing um, in this case is whenever you target these guys, they just die instantly, which makes this red matchup pretty good. The spell does not resolve because the creature goes to graveyard before it actually resolves. It just goes to graveyard when it's targeted, so keep that in mind. You can't use Chandra's Outrage on all these illusions and have to deal two damage to the owner. Now, I'm in a pretty good board position now. He's a 10. Um, he's barely hit me. He's hit me like twice. I'm at 16. Um, I got a bunch of lands out. I still have Banefire, so I can still hit him for a bunch of damage. Um, but he has four cards in hand, so that's something you always want to keep in mind, too, while you're playing, is how many cards does my opponent have in the hand? How much land do they have out? What could they possibly be doing? And one good thing about Duels of Planeswalkers is, because it's a limited format, because you know there's only a certain number of decks, you can get an idea, like, oh, my opponent might have um, another one of those Phantasmal Dragons, and I might have to waste Banefire on it to not take gigantic amounts of fucking damage every turn. In general, in Magic, I don't ne normally recommend playing every land you draw. Um, especially because this is a limited format. So he knows what cards I could possibly have. He's going to repulse this back to my hand. Repulse is a great card in that deck. I'm going to be forced to play the Phoenix again. And he has two on top land. Is he going to counter the Phoenix? It's quite possible, but I don't really have a choice. And if he wants to waste a counter on it, I guess he can, because I can always burn on Banefire, get the Phoenix back in my hand, and recast it. Um, but that's something you want to do. You want to look, oh, my opponent has six untapped islands now. He could pretty much do anything in his entire deck. So it's just something you want to watch out for. Um, here we go, one of these crappy phantoms. He's got this three mana, two, three phantom. It's terrible, this illusion. If you're playing the blue deck, don't put those in your deck. For God's sakes, take those out of your deck. Um, almost anything other than the life gain artifacts would be much better. I don't have a lot of options, though, overall. I just have a lot of land. And some of his cards. Now I've drawn this elemental guy. Excuse me. And what he basically does is, when he's in play, all of your um, burn spells do double damage. So it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool card. Um, so I'm just going to cast that. Let's see here. Five mana, four, three. If you incident red sorcery, it would do damage to your opponent. LOLOL, your opponent takes double damage. Um, so it's only to your opponent, but it basically makes it that you can fish him. And now he doesn't know it. I only have one card in my hand. He is not aware that I can kill him next turn. Assuming he doesn't get rid of my elemental, I can bait and fire him. And this will double the damage. He's going to cast his bear. He's got two more cards in hand. He cannot counter Banefire, because Banefire's going to be over five. So, oh, oh, no, wait. No, okay, he's going to just steal my guy. All right. Okay, all right. So that kind of sucks. Um... I guess my calculation that I was going to win next turn is probably wrong. It looks like I'm going to lose next turn because he now controls everything on the board and I have a 2-2 flyer. But keep this in mind. You don't want to chump block, right? I could chump block with this flyer. Oh-ho! Oh, Volcanic Hammer. All right, three damage here, two damage for the Phoenix. That would be five. Plus, I'll have six on tap lands for Banefire. Five damage, kill him. I think it's quite possible. Now, again, he has two on tap lands, one card in hand. He could definitely counterspell. So if he's got a counterspell, I lose. If he doesn't, I win. So you can't really say, oh, well, I'm not going to cast it because he has a counterspell. Well, guess what? Um, if he has a counterspell, 
you know, if he does, you just gotta weigh the risk. Like, if he doesn't have a counter spell, there's no way you could win other than doing this. I'm gonna hit him with that. I'm gonna hit, and maybe he didn't counter because he's waiting for a bigger spell like Lava Axe, but what he doesn't realize is he can't counter Bane Fire. It's, I'm just gonna send five damage to his face. Goodbye, bro. It was nice knowing you. See you back in Dominaria. Um, for any of the people out there who played Magic the Gathering, um, yes, I, you know, I, I read all the stupid books, at least back in the... Back in the day, the old books, all the Brothers War, all that jazz. Many of them were pretty good, but I pretty much stopped with um, Apocalypse because Apocalypse sucked. Um, just, again, look through the cards. In general, you want to keep your deck as small as possible. Does it need to be exactly 60 cards? Maybe not necessarily. I, I would aim for it, and this guy sends me a message. Ooh, is he pissed? Is he pissed I won? Um, Ryu Hayabusa. Good game, man. I've always hated Red since 11 years ago when I started playing Magic. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. That's some that's some real bro ship here. And that's something you can't buy with mana. You cannot buy brothership. You can buy Brotherhood, um, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood for um, I believe it's probably down to like forty nine ninety nine now. But um for friends, you can't buy friends. This hand right off the bat is terrible. Um so we're gonna go for another hand. And uh, here we go. This one looks good. I have the, and of course, yeah, I know with all the cards in now, we got these um this, I don't even know, Flame Kin Brawler. Uh, he's one mana for zero two, and you can pay any amount of red mana you want to uh, pump him up for additional power. You want to get him on the board first instead of the Cinder Wall because he will have something sickness. Cinder Wall, no one gives a fuck about Cinder Wall. Um, so you want him on the board as early as possible so you can attack. And I chose to play the Kiln Fiend instead of the Brawler, uh, instead of attacking the Brawler because in the long run the Kiln Fiend will be much more important to winning. Um, he's going to use his turn to draw some land. I'm going to use his turn to laugh my ass off because. Uh, um, he doesn't realize that the pain is about to be brought. Again, I'm not going to play Cinder Walls now because he has nothing on the board, so there's nothing to block with him. Attack with both creatures, pause the game, use the Brawler's ability, pump him up to 3 2. And one thing that's cool about 2012 compared to the old duels of the Planeswalkers is that they made the first turn drops for every deck way better. So there's like actually useful cards you can play the first turn instead of playing garbage or staring at your hand with nothing to play. Yeah, look at this guy, he's pretty cool. Pretty friggin' cool. He's gonna get more land. Cannot really recommend that strategy against the red deck. Um, just getting infinite more lands. He really needs to get something on the board to make me not want to continue to attack. This is Ancient Depths is a cool deck and all, but it's very slow. Well, it's not necessarily that slow, but if you're playing it really slow, then I guess it's slow. Here's the Punishing Fire, two damage instant creature player. Um, not a great card, but it's a card that, you know, gives you a lot of options. Now here, I'm not gonna play anything again. He has nothing on the board that I wanna burn. I'm just gonna pump for damage. Just get the damage through while I can, because as soon as he gets something big on the board, Flame Kin Brawler, uh, if that's what it's called, is that, yes, no? No, yes, that's what it is, Flame Kin Brawler. <laughs> is going to be useless because I'm not really going to, yeah, I guess I could attack and pump him up and, you know, but its utility drastically decreases um, and I don't want to spend all my mana every turn just pumping Flame Kim Brawler over and over. Now, he's getting a little risky here. If I were him, I would just get something on the board. I don't care if it's some 1-1 guy. Oh, well, there you go. Okay, it's a 1-1 guy. Um, I would be just a little bit nervous and I guess he is and he gets a land. He clearly doesn't have another one of these guys where he would have played it. Um, but hey, I think this game's pretty much over. Now, I now when you have this choice, do you hit him with the, the Punishing Fire for two, or do you hit him with the Volcanic Hammer for three? Well, the Volcanic's a sorcery, and uh, this is instant, you can do it later, uh, whatever. I'll, I don't. I want to save the three in case you play some big, fat creature. I want to save the higher damage for that. So get rid of that guy, pump the Kiln Fiend up for four, two, attack. And all I want to do is get rid of the blocker, hit him for a couple extra damage with the Kiln Fiend, just make my way through so I can beat the shit out of him. Attack 4-2, 2-2 um, two, two there. I guess I probably actually might have been able to... Was that, would I, yeah, I would have been able to finish the game there. So I kind of fucked up. If I hit him with the Volcanic Hammer, because he's a 5 life now, that would have run down to 2, and the Kiln Fiend would have been pumped up 3 more also, so it would run down to negative 1. Now he plays the giant Sky Shroud trample face, whatever the hell it's called. It's gigantic, it's really scary. But what he doesn't know is I have two Volcanic Hammers, um, so he's basically dead. Um, and now I hit him with second hammer. He concedes because he realizes either I burn, but even if I don't have burn, I could attack with both creatures. And he can't block both of them with, with one guy. So I'm getting two damage through either way, and that's game. Well, guys, this is Duels of Planeswalkers 2012. I'm Wingspan TT. We were just playing the delicious Unquenchable Fire deck. Um, I do like this deck. I do think there are other good decks in the game, but this is a fun one. Um, I will, if you want, go into the other decks, go into some card-by-card -card strategy, and I'm going to be writing a little bit on TopTierTactics.com about it. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope uh, to see you guys at Friday Night Magic. Not, not that actually.
that would be really lame.